Bunnings Warehouse. Here we go, punters. The NBL finals are fast approaching and there is no better way to get involved in them than bet with mates because we've all got those mates that are just so focused in on the footy at the moment. They don't quite follow the NBL as much as we probably want to. So you could be the saviour in your bet with mates group. So make sure you jump on board. You've got the deposit limits that are able to be set. You can rate your mates' bets with emojis. I know the type of emojis that I usually get sent and I don't think that I can repeat them on here, but there's plenty of fun to be had punting with your mates with bet with mates. So enjoy the app and most importantly, gamble responsibly. I'm always on time. I'm ahead of the game. I'm first place. I'm in my prime. Hard work that pays off. I pay dues. I'm paid off. Cross me, get crossed off. I'm so fresh. I'm so raw. Go hard like a day. They spent much of the season on top of the Hungry Jacks NBL table and tonight Melbourne United can go one step closer to solidifying that top finish with a win tonight over the Cairns Taipans. They're rolling at the moment, they're playing very good basketball and they're on their home floor tonight against the Cairns team who haven't been to Melbourne at all this season. Their first trip to Metropolitan Melbourne might just be a winning one for Adam Ford's men. Hello and welcome to Monday Night Basketball. Great to have your company. Jack Everin joined by Corey Homicide. Williams and Pete Hawley and this is the last box pretty much for Melbourne United to tick Pete. Well it is and really if they do win this game they'll solidify top spot barring a hundred point twist in the final round. But we've, say 100 points? We've seen some crazy things happen we've in the NBA. We've never seen a 100 point twist. <laughs> so for sure. It's going to be... Spell, they, know what, they know what's on the line. So they're going to come out here and expect to do that, which would be a huge effort. Potentially a chance to have 21 wins in a season. What an effort that would be. Corey, here's the ladder, and it just got a little more interesting for Melbourne, given that Sydney lost yesterday. You know, at some point, the Kings were going to lose, and I'm sure they'd rather lose now than in finals. So, uh... I predict the ladder is going to look exactly like this at the end of regular season. It's all going to come down to round 21, which starts on Thursday night. But to matters at hand tonight and for Melbourne United, take a look at their DoorDash starting lineup. And to celebrate the NBL Finals, DoorDash are giving you the chance to eat your way to LA. Use the code DASH2LA on all orders between now and May 29. And you'll be in the running to take three friends or family on a five-night trip to see the Lakers play in Los Angeles. Well, Jelly, back in the starting lineup, game time decision last week and Dean Vickman's probably thinking now what lineup do we want to run with in the finals and look Delhi Shaley that is a really tough backcourt to score against we've seen it all season long we haven't seen them start too much together Dean Vickman going to try something here Corey, let's have a little look at Shaili. Holistically, I guess it's hard sometimes with this Melbourne team and you look at so much scoring power and then obviously the NBA experience of Matthew Della Vadova, but Shaili, a footlocker player of the game again in their win over Brisbane on Saturday. He was everywhere. You know, what I love about Shaili is we know defensively what he's going to do. This game, five steals, eight assists, three rebounds, 13 points. But for me, he's the reason they are where they're at. They have big names, they have superstars with NBA championship winning experience on their roster, but there's so many games he's come up so big because of his individual defense on ball, shutting key players completely out of the game. I would not be surprised if that man, Shaley, is defensive player of the year. Speaking of defense, Hulls is at the analysis center, and while so many things are working for United right now, Pete, you're taking a look at a couple of things that Dean Vickerman would like his men to tighten up on between now and playoffs. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, the half call, we've seen how tough they are to score against. Shaley, Matthew Delavadova, Jack White, but Transition defense is somewhere where teams are starting to take a little bit advantage of. The Hawks did it in the two games they beat Melbourne United on their floor. Take a look at this. The Hawks have five guys underneath this rebound, two players back from Melbourne United on that defensive transition. But watch how quickly they try and push this ball forward before Melbourne United gets set. So we're going to pause it here. You see Jack White. He's pointing because his man is Duot Breath. Duot Breath right here is calling for the ball. Ratan Mays zips that ball. But instead of Duot Breath just waiting for the defense to get set, he's going to put some heat on the rim. Pass comes. He's going to attack before they set. Little drop-off pass. Sam throwing for the easy two. The Hawks did that really well in both games. We know the Brisbane Bullets lost. Here's another way the Bullets did a really good job of attacking in defensive transition. 
same thing, the ball gets loose, Deng Deng gets it, and instead of pushing it super hard, he's just waiting for somebody to pick him up. Now that man is Dave Barlow. Dave Barlow is going to protect the ball. He's called for it, but he hasn't stopped it in time. So it puts Shaley in a tough spot trying to think, do I need to go to Deng Deng? Deng Deng waits for somebody to bite, and then both Jason Kadi runs, Anthony Drimmick runs to the corner, little touch pass over, and they get some easy threes. Melbourne United is so tough to score against in the half court. That's why if you can get down, let's try and get a shot before they get set up, it's going to be a lot easier to do. Nicely done, Pete. We'll take a good look at them across the night as well. To the Cairns Taipans and their starting lineup, Corey. And there's Keanu Pinder coming off a career high night against Perth on Saturday. 24 and 80. He's been in fantastic form. You know, last season, he's just, he's done a 180 from last season. Last season, you know, it was hard to find his feet, did not have a coach that really supported him the way Adam Ford has supported him. And he's flourished. The best thing about him is that man's a free agent. And what does that mean? The price <laughs> has went up. <laughs> so the Taipans in possession to start this one. Our officials tonight, Vaughan Mabry, Damian Lyons and Elliot Green. And that's not the start that they would have been looking for. Here's Golding. First look. He misses. P Pinder crashes the boards. Ben Air starting again tonight. His first game as a starter was when they played a couple of weeks ago, there's Pinder with the first points of the game. Playing with supreme confidence. And we've seen it over the last few weeks. It, it's a credit to him and it's a credit to Adam Ford. We know they have a history together, but with, with the, what you mentioned, Corey, last year for Keanu Pinder, to be able to unlock this, it's a lot of it from the shoulders up and a lot of that is the credit of Adam Ford. And then steps in, but has called for the block. Wasn't quite there. And that man right there coming off a big one, 25 and 13. Look, if Steven Zimmerman does not play the rest of the regular season, Joe Alchu Jr. has an opportunity to be number one in scoring. He has, he's number one in shot blocking ability in, in this season, but he gets 26 rebounds over the next two games. He has the rebounding. Time. Rebounding, yeah, just mm. scoring. <laughs> I'm sorry, no, I'm sorry, not like, scoring. Rebounding. Ross, what happened? Rebounding. But you're exactly right. I mean, he's been tremendous all season long. Which comes to my first question, oh, fellas. We've been, we've been, we've been, going, we've we've been going a minute and we've got a question. I miss you guys. You know, it's some days <laughs> off, you know, refreshed. I'm back and I'm ready to go. We know. We saw your Instagram. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. He gets that, the 26 rebounds. Yep. And he gets leads and rebounds, leads and blocks. This team finishes in first place. We already know scoring, he's doubled his average from last year. Is he the MVP of the league? Oh, wow. Best player on the best team and finish leading in blocks and rebounds and double his scoring output. Well, look, I mean, we had that conversation a few weeks, uh, a few months ago. He, we thought he was leading the charge. Had a bit of a period where he went a little quieter than the expectations he set at the start as he puts the ball on the floor here. Tries to get one to go. I think right now, he's been terrific. I think he'll land on the All NBA first team. The only issue for him, I travel. think, is that the other two, Bryce Cobb and Jalen Adams, have just gone oh. that, that extra step and put themselves right. just a little higher up. What I can't wait for, no matter what, the, just the vote layout from what vote the coaches and captains go with. Because for exact, that exact read, he's been fantastic. So have the others in that conversation. It feels more like third or fourth in the voting, doesn't it? Dick Law in there as well for the Wildcats. But as you say, Pete, it's going to be a fascinating awards night. More on that to come in the next week or so. Lala Chul misses. Man, say, make no mistake, crazy things have happened. So if you're someone voting and you just cannot pick, look, everyone's talking about Bryce, everyone's talking about Jalen. This is too hard. You know what, Joe, you played well too. Here you go. <laughs> he could come home with at least one other award, plus an NBA, all NBL first team. Could be a big night for Joe Lawala Chul. Pinder. That's the only bucket in the game for the Taipans so far. Back to the basket. They're playing through him early. And Golding trying to get things moving. Three of nine from outside against Brisbane on Saturday. Didn't have a huge say on the game, but did make a couple of important threes in that fourth quarter. That's what big time players do down the stretch. They find ways to close the game. The ball movement has Deliver Dover open. Been stepping into that really confidently all season long, but starting to knock a few more down, which would be 
Very good for Dean Vickman and Melby Knight. Heading into the finals, that's when you want him shooting his best, feeling good from outside. And not good at all for the opposition because that's the scout. He's managed to get that shooting clip up to 37%. At one stage, it was in the low 20s. Yeah, it was bad, but that's about believing in yourself, getting to the gym. He's been in the gym after and before practice with D-Mac getting him up. But that's also to do that. You've got to take them. Like, we see a lot of people, he was struggling early. A lot of people maybe shy away. Look, I might shoot one or two a game after that if mm. we're struggling. He keeps getting them up. He trusts his reps. He said that after that Illawarra game when he exploded early in the season. He said, look, I've been doing this the whole time. I've been practicing. I know it's going to come. And never shied away from it. So it's a big credit to him. Back into the starting lineup tonight. Was a little unwell on Saturday. Came off the bench. Udai Baba, having started the last four games, will be off the bench this evening. Pinder. Once again in that low block. Almost had it snatched away by White. And they made it work. It wasn't pretty, but Bookwell scores. I have no idea how that ball did not get kicked out of bounds. It was ugly, but they'll take the bucket. Just seeing the half court, everybody using their body as help. Shay Illy in there, putting hands on everything, blowing everything up. That's why they are so tough to score against in the half court. Not that time for Dally. How's the athleticism from Jack White? He's sort above everyone else. That is one man you better find a body and block him out early because he can do things just like that. Only had one point on Saturday against the Bullets. He'll be looking to hit back. A hand in the face of Deng, O-board by Pinder. He's counter Pinder again, just has a knack for it. Knows his role. He's gonna try and get some dump offs. Getting the ball more for some one-on-one -on -one moves. Just, you see Jack White here, just straight bully everybody in the air. But Keanu Pinder just has a knack of getting himself to the rebounds on both ends. Just been super impressive. Taipans again without Steven Zimmerman tonight and without Scott Machado, but there's Mirko Jerich who's back in. Easy two from McCall. Mirko Jerich has missed the last 12 games with a quad injury and has only played six games for the season. Well, they've had injuries throughout their whole season. No, no Scott Machado. But when they were healthy, they were starting just to get some things going. This wasn't healthy long enough. And the hole that they've dug, been in, was just too long. Well, that started with when the, to recover. When the COVID outbreak happened throughout the league. They didn't have it, so all their games were getting cancelled. Adam Ford was getting frustrated because they were healthy. And then as soon as they, everyone else came back, they went through their team. The loss of Machado early was unsettling for them as well, wasn't it? When you basically build a team around a point guard and then he's not there, Corey, that's hard to replace. It, as you see, they couldn't replace it. You know, just his poise and running the team, you know, a true extension of the coach. And without him, they, it's been a struggle. 8 and 17 on the season. They do start games well. That's not their problem. There's Deng from the corner. Nice baseline drive and take. Baseline drive, baseline drift. You catch that in that in that corner, you got to let it go. Five unanswered points for the Taipans. They take an early lead at John Kane Arena. That's a foul. And Pinder. I think that's his second. Angle. Have a seat. I like the aggressiveness. And here's yeah. that corner to corner pass. It's good defense by Jack White. Contested, but Chuck Dean's got such a big release. Delhi was there on the catch, but can't do a whole lot about that. But we, we speak about the injuries, the big Zim as well. The silver lining is if Machado doesn't get hurt early in the season, we know he's hurt now, and Zim, we probably don't see the emergence of Keanu Pinder and Bull Qual. That is true. We don't, we, the, their minutes would have been limited, they wouldn't have had the opportunity early on to grow into their role. So that, that's a silver lining down and forward. Yes, it's frustrating, but what you've been able to find in these two players fitting your system has been awesome to see. Valid point. Nate Jawai in for his first minutes. Jordan Natai as well for the Taipans. Ariel Hook Porty. Mason Peatling in for Melbourne United. It's 
Gia McCall stepping back for three. It's 24% for the season from outside. Della Vadova can see a path to the basket. Drives and scores. Good over Zalas there. Saying that he cop one in the face for his troubles on the transition bucket. So he could potentially be going to the line for one. Not sure, that's the best way to go about it is picking up a foul straight away. And oh, there you go. Just swipe down from the call. I'm saying it's going to be right across the beak. When there's like a little like, scrape like that, it's really hard. Can't too hard. Gotcha. That's why you got to wear mouth guards, kids. Get your chompers knocked out otherwise. We saw straight away scores in transition and then just gets straight up and in the grill of McCall. Ball for the foul, but seeing the tone. Ben Ayers, another one who's made the most of his opportunities. McCall's had a couple of looks from outside. It'll be a foul on Jawai. Dean Vickham and Corey on Saturday in their win over the Brisbane Bullets was very careful with the way that he spread the minutes. A lot of players sort of played around the high teens, early 20s. No one played bulk minutes. Do you expect to see more of that tonight? We sure will. He has to get a lot of guys. Uh, first of all, he wants to get some rest in and give guys opportunity to uh, get minutes because in the finals, you know, it's not really your main guys that help you advance. It's the other guys, so they need to be out there feeling com comfortable and confident. With that, it's also just what group works really well together. Trey Ely knocks that one down. He's been knocking that down all season long. And does the same thing as Delhi scores on one end, picks up a quick foul. But Dean Vick went thinking, what lineup do I think we get the best start with? Yep. And then what substitutions do I come in to keep that start going? Basically, Vick trying to figure out what is the best substitution plan that I have come finals time so that we're firing on all cylinders. They've played around with a few different guard rotations. They've had, since Bubba's came, he started in four games. They had Caleb Agarda starting. At the moment, it's Della Vadova and Illy. Is that the most effective starting lineup, do you think? I think it is with, with Bubba in the lineup because we know of his defensive capabilities. So let's say if they do play the Wildcats in that first round, you've got both Delhi and Shaley to try and switch or hassle Bryce Cotton on at the same time. Bubba comes in to give one a rest. One shot. Whether he thinks, look, if, if Vic Law's out, we don't know what's happening there. Maybe I can bring Delhi off or Shea Ely off the bench and make sure we have one of those two gloving Bryce Cotton at all time. He's got plenty to work with. So does that kind of leave Caleb Bagata on the outer a little bit? Only played 10 minutes on Saturday. I mean, he's going to be working with Udai Bubba. I mean, we talk about top lanes with X Factor for the Wildcats, if that's going to be their matchup. As CG in transition, that is a layup. <laughs> I'd rather give up a layup than he get a wide open look. That's easy money for the competition's most effective three-point shooter. Melbourne out to a four-point lead. Jawai, good position. Kicks it out for Jerick up top. It goes. They've missed him. There's no doubt about it. Just that shooting on the side to what really to help out like a guy like Tajima McCall. We know that his strength is not shooting the ball, so everybody just closes, shrinks the floor. Have Jerick spotting up. You've got to be aware of where he is because how quickly he can catch and release that. Oh. Colby threw it up there for Hook Porty. I mean, that was just a beautiful play to just see execute, you know, and turn in the corner. Chris Goulden's going to attract so much defense and with an athletic big diving that hard. It's just an easy play to be to, to finish. Nantai fumbled the Jawai pass and then Jawai fumbled the Nantai, the Nantai pass. Illy for Hook Porty. It's a good take from Ben Air. He's putting a body on the line. Oh, that little lob from Chris Golden. Looked like a lefty floater and then just put enough little side spin on in the last second to throw it up. Well, Porty will go get it. And down the second play, Ben Air. Got Hook Porty coming down the lane. Put your body on the line. He's seven foot and 114 kilos. I'm not sure I'd be rushing to take a charge. Oh, he's probably the second guy in the league I would least like to get hit from. Nate Jawai, number one, for sure. Hook Porty's a big unit. 19 years of age, too, the German next up. Offensive foul against Cairns. That time on Nartai for an illegal screen. Here's Taipan's coach, Adam Ford. Saw a bit of everything from Cairns 
in their loss to Perth. Their first half was fantastic on Saturday. It, it fell away in a big way in the second half. And the biggest problem for them, Corey, was that they allowed 55 in the first half and 51 in the second. Just defense. Remember Adam Ford was screaming that all year. And uh, sometimes they showed it and sometimes they didn't. And that just comes to consistency. Hence, you know, why they're in the position that they're in. Regardless who's out there, you got to lock up on D. Poor Qual hits the floor. There was a Superman. Peatling puts the ball to the floor and goes to work. Gets himself on the foul. Good take for Peatling. And back to your point, Corey, talking about Cairns and the defensive end. So long. You look about six weeks ago, we were looking at the tight ends trying to get into what Adam Ford wanted with that culture on defensive end. They had three or four guys on the bench in the jersey. Well, that's just a lack of bodies. And they're trying to play full court, speed the game up, run and jump, do all this kind of energetic stuff in the defensive end. It tires you out. It's not have enough cattle to throw out there and rotate, keep fresh legs. You're going to run out of steam. We've seen that so often. They've just had a lot go against the way they're trying to play. Pitling another who didn't see a lot of court time on Saturday. Six minutes. It was a big part of their championship team last year. Top five for Melbourne. Rebounds, blocks, and steals yeah. last season. Goes two of two. 19-14, a minute to play in the opening quarter. Taipan's in possession. Air. Feeds Majuk Deng, long way from the cup, shot clock at five, nice take baseline. And he's one that needs to put points on the board. He's done his whole career. Great take baseline, rip left, two dribbles, takes the hit and nice reverse finish. He goes to the, the free throw line for three to hard way, but... I say he does it this whole year, but we haven't seen that too often. And I think that's something that he can add to his game against certain matchups. But Juk Deng makes one move with Take the ball. Take off the dribble, he's at the best. It's, it's two steps from the three-point line. So this is the extra. I didn't want to say anything before the free throw. He currently leads the NBL in free throw shooting. On well, you thought it. 92%. So that's, that's your fault. You thought it. I think a lot of things. I'm not going to be blamed for all of them. Bryce Cotton on 91%. Oh, sorry, Bryce. Sorry, Majuk. More to the point. An offensive foul against Hook Porting. Defense, he pushed him right in the back. Cairns is hanging in there. They'd be happy with their start. And that's Hook Porting. Bull Cole doing a really good job of fronting. Oh, sorry. Yeah, he's doing what he has to do, undersized. But Hook Porting, you just got to realize, look, he's doing a good job. I haven't done my work to get in front of him. He's got to let that go. Pick up your second foul, you got to come out of the game. Had a good start. Got that alley oop. Picked up a rebound. Now you have to take a seat. Couple of seconds differential between game and shot clock. Air. What a pass. Found the rolling man of the cup in Keanu Pinder. Great pass, but better finish. That Illy from halfway. It's a one-point game at quarter time at John Kane Arena. Monday Night Hoops in the Hungry Jacks NBL. Melbourne lead at 19 to 18.
Great to have you with us for Monday Night Basketball in the Hungry Jacks NBL. Melbourne United looking to sew up that top spot on the table. Lead by one at quarter time over the Cairns Taipans at 19 to 18. Matthew Deliver Dover has five for Melbourne. Majuk Deng has made a good start to this game with five for the Taipans. And the winner of our Kmart gift card for tonight is Lincoln Hayne. They've been United members since the beginning. They go as a family every game that they can. Lincoln's favourite players are Jack White and Chris Golding. I think he's made a couple of good selections there. Can't go wrong there. Good start though from both teams with the Cairns Taipans. Down one. One thing you do, you're playing in John Kane Arena against Melbourne United. You've got to shoot the ball well. 47% from the field. Got four turnovers, so tighten that up. Turnovers have been an issue for the Taipans all season. They are last in the competition in that stat. More important, what Cairns have to do is play defense. Holding Melbourne United to 19 points in the first quarter. Squall gets that one to go. Oh, and that's a special one. And he does that in style. And one coming up. That's three ball number 57. And equals the record for the most threes by an Australian rookie. Have a look at this. Oh, 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 excuse me, Hammer. We're tied. See? Will he pass Hammer this tonight? See you, Hammer. <laughs> Listen, I knew there was something special about this young man. Ever since he hit the eight threes on the road against Bridgman, I said then, Rookie of the Year. What you got right now to tell me, Peter Hooley, is that man the Rookie of the Year? Well, shake your hand and say you spot on. <laughs> I think it is. I mean, he's been unreal. And again, the circumstances weren't great for the team yeah. with losing key guys, but this man stepped up. Talk about Adam Ford as an offensive foul from Dave Barlow. What a story it's been from Paul Quag. Oh. But love the look at this. This He's just come in with confidence since the first opportunity. Didn't play much in the blitz. Let's mm. go back to that. Didn't play a whole lot in the blitz. When he did get on there, showed signs of a guy that wasn't going to need long to get going. Here's the offensive foul. Dave Barlow just, just wasn't set. And Dave Barlow puts his chin into Bullpole's forehead. I think Dave Barlow is upset, but he didn't get a chance to stop in the end. It was just an unfortunate timing. Cairns almost gave it up. Been here under real pressure from Udai Bubba. Just beat the eight count. Behind the back, and then the spin from Pinder was nice. Melbourne have picked up their third foul of the quarter in less than a minute. Back to that graphic. Did you see who's at the bottom? Me? DJ Vasiljevic. Oh. What'd you say, you? <laughs> <laughs> it's for makes, not misses. <laughs> well, here's this foul. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one, Jack. <laughs> No, I did. The names were phenomenal. DJ Vasiljevic, but DJ, John Reilly. We know what DJ Vasiljevic David Vasiljevic Close. went through in his rookie year. Yeah. Yeah. Think about what that record could have been yeah. had he been healthy. Had he been healthy. And he's but in we, some sensational form at the moment well, too. He is. It doesn't take much for Shout him to DJ. But that is an unreal thought. I mean, 49 in how many games he played. The Taipans have scored the last 10 points in the game. Second quarters have been a huge problem for them this season. They're last in the competition. They started this one well. The Wild Shaw stripped. Ben Air snatched it away from him, and there's some energy about the visitors right now. The man is playing with some confidence and poise. Qual out of control. There's that half court defense. Ben Air just slowing it down in transition. Not against set, but good hands here from Ben Air. Keanu Pinder not fouling. And right here, it would have been a one-on-one -on -one had he put his head down to really try and attack. Slowed it down. Gave Melbourne United you know, a chance to set up. You know, Bubba was shuffling his feet well. It's great hands by Ben Eck. And here's why. Pinder has two fouls. Nice mid-range hit by McCall. But you don't want Pinder to get that third foul. Jim McCall saying that he was there. And he's asking for a coach's challenge. We, we have Adam Ford, we have We learned. know usually. Well, That's I, the whiz. You've spoken to Fordy about this. I have. I think he's <laughs> learned. Very, very early on, having a look at it here. And, oh, here we go. Oh, might have had a case. He, he looked like he got there on time, but he fell the wrong way. He fell to the side. Pinder keeps the wild chul off the Adam, glass. Adam Ford doesn't want to listen to too many players when it comes to trying to challenge <laughs> something. I think he's learned that lesson. Lead 
hit by seven, the tight bounce. It's a crossover from Ooh. here. And the oh, pass man. to Pinder and one. Listen, that young man is a player out here playing with full of confidence and making plays happen at both ends. Nice hesitation, cross. Hits the diver with a beautiful left hand. What do you call it? What, what is that, a pocket pass? What do you call that? A little shuffle pass. A little shuffle pass. I mean, there again, you go. Again, we talk about silver lining. Scott Machado heard again. Ben Air gets an opportunity that he wouldn't have had. And right now, he's starting to take it. 28-19. 14 unanswered points from the Cairns Taipans. Let's take a listen to Dean Vickerman. Down there, he hit like a, no, we played off McCall a little bit, but he gets to that short range. We gotta make sure we got contest. Then air, yeah, we're getting over, we're driving. But again, on pick and roll, he's just looking for pocket pass right now. Guys, you guys, you gotta get back. We gotta pull over, we go and help Joe. He's in two man's land right now. This end. Post ups haven't been great for us right now. So we need more movement, more on ball on the perimeter, more attack. Alright. Go ahead, more head tap and more high punch right now. And the five. Joe right now. Well, no surprise, Dean Vickman bringing Shaley back in. You heard him talk about adjusting the scout on Ben Air. You've got to know that, yes, he's playing well, play, taking advantage of opportunity. He's not trying to put up 10 to 15 shots no. a game. He's trying to be aggressive to pass the ball. He's got three assists. So get over the screen and, and force him to think about having to shoot the ball. They've got some real foul issues now, Melbourne. Joe Wild Chul has three. Ariel Hook Porty has two. Collectively, they have 12 in the game. You know, a lot of times, at this time of the year, when you're on top of the ladder, it can be difficult to get up for a game like this. And that's the thing I love about this league, whether you're in first or at the bottom, not nowhere near finals, you still have to show up or you'll lose. This pass, Golding for Jack White. Good ball movement. That's better. Well, I think it says more about like the Cairns Taipans. We started to see this over the last couple of rounds. When you don't have much to play for, another good pass, good cut from Tajir McCall. The poison, this young man. I've just seen him in, in, in this quarter, really. The plays that he's making, I'm impressed. Great extra pass for that two-point finish. Gold in the white. But when you're on demand and you haven't got finals to play for, you play a lot loosely, you play some freedom. We're starting to see that a bit and some confidence. Because I guarantee you, last week if I asked you, are Adelaide going to go 2-0 this round against Perth in Perth and against Sydney in Sydney? No, sir. No, not a chance. No. But again, they're playing loose, they're playing free, they can't make finals. So let's go out there and have some fun, be a party spoiler. And they're doing that. And that's what Cairns have come out right now trying to do. I just love the fact that a young man who has no experience and this, has he played in this league before? I don't know him, and I've been here for five seasons. So for him to come out, he can't think about it like it's free, I'm not making finals. He's out here trying to impress, and he's doing that so far. 14 and 0 run that Cairns went on. The second most against Melbourne by any team this season. That's a foul. Free throws for there Bummer. from a juke team. No, you spot on Corey, but again, what comes with that is he's going to get plenty of minutes with Scott Machado out, so he does get that little bit more freedom of look. I've got a great opportunity here. I get to play through mistakes. It's not like okay, they've got nothing to play for. Young kid coming off the bench, maybe play three minutes a game or something. He's going to have plenty of opportunity in these last couple of games and has been starting to show what he can do. And you know what's cool about that? What's after NBL when it's done? NBL one. He's going to come in. Take that confidence up, in there. Take that confidence in there. Speaking of young fellas doing something. Go on, hit us. All right. You mentioned in the first quarter, silver line for Bukwal. Bukwal, Keanu Penn, right? And now Ben Ayo throwing in that mix. Let's talk about silver lining with New Zealand Breakers. The young fellas are preparing for the draft. They'll both be first round picks. Hugo Besson, Usman Dino. How about Yanni Wetzel? Signing with the EuroLeague club. That's how respected this league is now. You understand what I'm saying, Hooli Jack? Mm. 
world-renowned and respected. The eyes and ears that are on this league. And you know what it's based off of, to be honest with you? The Next Stars Initiative. It's brought international attention every game in this league, whether scouts are in the country or not. So you get to see all the talent in this league. Exposure leading to expansion. I got a question for you in a little bit. Oh, great pass. Alley in for hook point. Well, I'll be waiting, but oh, there's some big names he mentioned. Is they try attack and transition. Nothing comes of it. Before, before I let you finish that, big shout out to obviously the French sensations. Looking forward to seeing their future. But big shout out to Yanni Wetzel. Man. Yeah, yeah. But here's that little lob pass. Those two enjoy practicing with each other every single day. And that's why that connection's there. Timeout call by the Taipans. Just let Melbourne back into this game after leading by nine. That's back to a five point lead now. Let's take a listen to Coach Adam Ford. Well, this one, this up. If we got Ben picking up in the full court, yeah, you can be the plug guy, right? So you can help plug it, knowing that if you're in that position, no one's gonna. If KP's there to help him step up, right, whoever doesn't have Goldie, everybody else is collapsing in just to help with his man. But the reality is... Right here. Yeah. Hey, 57 on the side out. 57 on the side out. Let's go. Taipans lead by five, 30 to 25, midway through the second quarter. Some oh. famous faces in the crowd. Uh-oh. That man last season was doing beautiful things for Melbourne United. And you talk about exposure, Corey. He took it to the next level after last season and made his way to the association. Jock Landau. Grand final MVP. Oh, welcome back. A stud. Would have been MVP if they didn't double team him as much as they was double teaming him last year. Just want to make sure that was Jock and not his brother who looks like a twin Look we saw like him. last season. I'm Look just like him. I'm still not convinced that that is <laughs> Jock himself. But we will take the word for it. Finish for pin two more. Is that kind of like how you and Adam Ford look a little similar? I've been told that a couple of times. Look, <laughs> I'll take that. The tats. Oh, look, I'll take that. But again, I, I got the fade for tonight. Adam, he didn't coach Ford, so I might have to let him know. Keanu Pinder has 10 points, double figures again. Golding open. And he's, if you listen to Adam Ford in the timeout, he said, look, we're going to lift on the defensive end, but do not leave Chris Golding. They did exactly the opposite, left him wide open. Ball. Sat off. Shooting stats will back that up. Pin oh, the other ball. Get out of here. Porty says no way. Yeah. And then at the other end, unfortunately, Cannon straight into McCall, and that'll be an offensive foul. Well, oh, good take from McCall. We don't often like to see just jumping in front of the big fella, but good rebound and Cancel nope. Get that out of here. We might have to check that. There might be a puncher. Man, that's McCall. It's a, it's a veteran play. Don't like to see it if the bigs aren't looking, running the lane, but. Smart play. That's three fouls on Hook Porty. He knew he was going to run straight over. Three on Hook Porty. Three on Luala Chul in the first half. Just, it's going to hurt, but I think Nate Jawa is saying... Nate Jawa right now is saying, that's Get happened to me ball. that many times. He, he probably feels for it. So tick up to five and a half minutes before halftime. Final. Final. That's what I'm saying right there. Give me the ball. Backs in. Hook Porty did well not to give away his fourth. Golding just starting to get himself going. Got to the elbow. There's two more. A little good patient take, Chris Golding. Just taking what the defense gives them. He's going to blow up that screen. Get to a sweet spot, rise up, knock it down. Afghan's got the answers. Three and five for him. Jarek turns the corner. Fires away. And Illy quickly gets things moving. Golding waited for Jarek to get up in the air and then splash. Well, Melbourne Ford, back in front. Adam Ford can have a chat about this because that's exactly the man they said you can't afford to lead. And again, just taking simply what the defense is giving him. First time he got to that jump shot. And right here, he knows there's lock and trail. Jarek runs past him, lets him get past and then rises up, knocks it down. Good push from Shea Illy. 
you know, when you think about it, Chris Golding has scored eight points in about 45 seconds. And it was right after that timeout. <laughs> where Adam Ford did say exactly whack, whack, whack. what we've been mentioning. So I think we've made the smart decision just to stay away from uh, from Adam Ford's What's it going to be exactly, in this time? Exactly out? what he would. First thing would have been, what did I say to end that timeout last time? Do not leave Chris Golding. It's interested to read on Sunday in, uh, in News Corp publications, and they've been great supporters of, of the Hungry Jacks NBL all season long. But 75 players were polled on a range of questions. I'm not sure this would shock too many to see that of the 75, who's the team you like to beat the most? That is the least surprising thing <laughs> I've seen all week. Other than sky is blue and grass is green. Well, we know it. I mean, the rock stars of the league. And then Perth Wildcats again. The reason they get so many votes is because they just keep winning over 35 years of making the finals. What was it like? You, you were a former Melbourne United player and a title winner with them. Did you feel that? Did you know that regardless of the situation, even a game like tonight, that everyone's always coming for you? Oh, no doubt. And I tell you what, a lot of it is because of that man Chris Golding. <laughs> Wherever he goes, they get stuck into him, but he seems to rise with that and thrive off that. Melbourne have scored the last eight. With a sluggish start to this second quarter. They turn things around, Jawai. Not the first time, and then couldn't reel it back in. Bubba. Got it. Starting to push the tempo of defense leading the offense. Nudo Bubba has four now. No surprise, Keanu Pinder getting back to the scorers bench. He's got ten points. Five rebounds. Probably wouldn't have taken him out. Managed to not draw another foul. Had too early in that first quarter. Loose ball falls to Majuk Deng. Kwal loves that corner ball. Not that time, though. Melbourne pushing transition. Here's Golding. Fouls. I'll tell you what, Shea Ely knew that is exactly what was going to happen as he brought the ball up. We'll give a lot of credit. I think it was Yudai Baba who cut ahead of him. This is that one before. We had Bubba on for the lob, didn't he? Well, he did. This is that play before. Just push the ball. You know, Bubba, short corner jump shot. But that last play. So see here, Shaley knew you know Bubba was going to bring that defense, attract both Jerry and Bull Quile. And Chris Golding also knew they were going to go. He gets to his spot, gets fouled. He's going to shoot three. That's just seeing the player step ahead. That's Shaley for you. 80% from the free throw line this season. Peter Hooley, I have a question for you. Uh, I've been wow. waiting. You said I've been waiting. Now this, this is. Look, I respect them all. I I'm going to assume my, them all. I'm going to assume. I my, really, really do. I don't have an answer. For I'm this. not picking favorites. I'm just. These are the facts. Chase Buford has just come off a hot 13-game win streak. He has that team in second. Dean Vickerman has this team again. In first, mm. closing in on 21 wins. Scott Roth has done a remarkable job in Tassie, as we know. Who wins coach of the year and why? I mean, those three names all deserve it. Any season you'd say, they all deserve it. To me, it's still Scott Roth. It just, it's the story what he's done with that entire organization in their first year and continues to do. He's been here, tees one up and knocks it down. New, the, newcomer of the year. This is just played five minutes, game and a half. I'm a fan. This is the Ben Air game. <laughs> I am a fan. <laughs> five points for Ben Air. To go along with five assists. Yeah. But yeah, back oh, Scott Roth, I think, is Chris Golding tees up another one. Chase Buford is going to be close behind. Dean Vick, 21 wins is an incredible achievement if they get to that. For a team that started the way they did in the first round and could take a Nate Jarway, and everyone was thinking, look, they're a piece or two away. They just hung their hat on the defensive end. I, again, this is a, I would love to see the breakdown of 
because every single person is so deserving. But I keep saying it. Liam mentioned this is what Lindsay Gay's trophy is all about. That's what Scott Ross done. Golding took the bump, played through, gets the members bounce. And he's the game's leading scorer with 16. Let me ask you something because I was looking at the question I was going to ask you. I didn't know if Chris Goulden hit all three free throws. Did he hit all three? Yeah. So he has about like 16 points in this court. This Kenny misses out. Loose ball. Illy with his feet set. Knocks down another one. He is shooting the ball beautifully. 40% across the season. You need to answer my who's your coach of the year? Look, I'm still rolling with Scott Roth. I mean, he has the least amount of talent overall compared to Melbourne United and Sydney. And look what he was able to do in year one. It's again unbelievable. Any other year, you look at what Trace Buford's done, David Quinn, they, they probably they, get in the landslide. Probably get in the landslide than any other year. And I was at the game yesterday when they beat Southeast Melbourne Phoenix. That team is no joke. They play hard every possession. They play together. They play for each other. And they locking up on D. Very impressive. Pinder misses the first. He's done a lot of things right in recent weeks. In the eyes of Melbourne fans, he'd do more right if he gave them some burgers. And does. There it is. <laughs> Code word is dick, courtesy of Keanu Pinder. Oh, boy! Upstairs! Great back door, dive, quick. Overplay you on the top side. Great pass, easy dunk. Melbourne United, Melbourne United have exploded in this second quarter. They're on a 7-0 run. Majuk Deng, well short on that three. Reminder, Cairns led 32 to 25. Big turnaround from the home team as they head towards halftime. Hook Porty swings for a garter. He just misses out. The Taipans with a couple of games to come in the last round of the season. Yeah, blocked by Hook Porty. Great block. Sped him upstairs. Nice take. Try to get into the body of the defender, but <laughs> the young fella told the young fella too little. You gotta admire his ambition. Love it. We well, did the right thing. Go at the body, try and throw him off balance. It's a big body. You have to put him on the floor. Still out there with three fouls. Shot clock at four. Time for air to be creative. Love it. And you know what I loved about that play? After he got his shot blocked, he went right back at him. That shows the heart and the courage that young man has. That's my new favorite player. Well, love him. Come on, young man. fella. That's Come my on. new favorite young player. Look, I love confident guys, because a lot of guys would have never went back in there to play after. Well, what I love about it is... That's what I love. I love the smarts, because he knew that he went into Hookport, he got blocked. So he also knows that now they're starting to go over the screen. We saw Delhi do that, so he just stopped. Let, let Caleb Agata run into him. Do you know how many players would have not even gone back in there, let alone this right after he blocks I know, I'm just glad, glad you said I love it. youngster, because... Yeah, come on. You got to... You know. You know my favorite player at the moment is, don't you? I got a few of them. I <laughs> so no. Jalen Adams don't. is my record. favorite. I was going to say no because of that. Xavier Cook's my second favorite. Oh, keep going. Oh. Xavier at the maze. It's an offensive foul. You didn't even stop. Poor Mason Peatley. There's a few two, off. Two, Fancy one. fouls on yeah, the screen. Yeah, there's been a few of them Thirty seconds left before half time. We can't even get Bryce in your top four anymore. Yeesh. I like. Brock. I mean Bryce. Come on. We know that. That's a given. That's a given. So Melbourne should get another look at it here. 
differential between game and shot clock of around eight seconds. Pinder. Back to the basket. Nice deep from Peatling. Did well not to foul. Plenty of time for United here to get a good look at things. Delhi. Got it. Right on half time. It was a slow start to the second quarter from Melbourne United. But it's all about the finish. They lead 48 to 39. They've come to life now. They have, and we expected it from Melbourne United playing against this Cairns outfit. And long rebounds, they're getting out in transition, had a lot of easy points towards the end of that second quarter in transition, which has helped them get out to this nine point lead. A bit to talk about for the Cairns Taipans. They've done a lot of good things in the first half, but they find themselves well down now. And Melbourne United, as they look to lock away that top spot, are in a really nice position. Chris Golding, the game's leading scorer at halftime. And Chris, the back end of that second quarter, it started to look more like it. Yeah, we, um, we struggled. We struggled. We, got, we, um, we didn't get enough stops. So, obviously, uh, you know, we couldn't run. And, you know, they, they slowed us down. They were at the free throw line and we were either taking the ball out of bounds. So, got some more stops and allowed us to run. CG, how do you plan for a game like this? You know what you're playing for, but Cairns, they're playing free. Young guys, Ben Air coming in to have an impact. How do you prepare for a game like this? Well, you have to um, you know, really respect the players on the other team. You know, we saw that with Brisbane the other night. They, you know, essentially had nothing to play for. So that's really dangerous. They come in swinging, shooting the ball with confidence. You know, there's, uh, there's no consequences. So much the same with Cairns. They've got a long, lot of young guys that are really trying to establish themselves and play really hard, so it's a massive danger game. Chris, we better let you go. Thanks for joining us, and good luck for the second half. Thanks, guys. Melbourne lead 48-39 to 39 on Monday Night Basketball here in the Hungry Jacks NBA.
Tough time at John Kane Arena. Melbourne United leading 48 to 39, but for a lot of that second quarter, Corey, it didn't look that way. The Taipans came out hard, had a nice lead themselves, but they are top of the table for a reason, Melbourne, and once they got their game going, they showed exactly why. Yeah, 100%. Um, they came out in the second quarter. They had 19 points in the first quarter. Second quarter, 29 points. So they exploded offensively, but it started on the defensive end for them. And the man right there that threw the alley with Chris Goulden had it going on. He might have had about 15 points in the second quarter to really take control of the game. But on the defensive end, they turned it up. Cairns did a good job in the first quarter and a half, but the game, once Chris Golden started hitting all those shots, it got tough for them. It's kind of been symptomatic of Cairns' season, hasn't it? We know, we've spoken a lot already about their injuries and not having access to their best players, but they... Is it fair to say, as we take a look at some of the, the halftime stats, is it fair to say that they have lapses in games that really hurt them? They're good for periods of time, but then they have lapses and they fall behind. That's exactly what happens, and that's what happens when you have big injuries for big players, the depth, the lack, the lack of depth and experience mm. during those times, those critical stages in the game, that's, that's, that's the game for them. Every time, that's what happens. They're either too tired because they have so many injuries on the side or lack of experiences out there at key moments because of the injuries. Mm. So it's been tough for them. But, they, but look, the silver lining. Keanu Penda, balling. Bull Kowal, my opinion, rookie of the year. And Ben Air. Your this man? young man right now. I just got the text. Shout out to the powers that beat Statty. He averaged 12 and 4 at Knox. Yeah. He's going to, after this game, he's one of the, the young fellas in this league right now is one of my favorites. I love the courage. I'm seeing seven points, five assists. Keep it going, young fella. He's making his way in the league. Chris Golding's very much established. He's one of the competition's best players, and he's had a very good first half. Leads all scorers in the game with 16 points on five of eight. And, you know, when you cannot give an elite, world-class shooter like Chris Gould in space at all, let alone at home, that open. You know, he's going to make the right plays. If you run him off the three-point line, he's going to hit mid-ranges. And look at that tough shot off of a head fake. And, you know, he can still take a hit, a bump, and still make plays. He is a championship winning guard. He's the best Ozzy two-guard in the league. You can see the Soda Stream shot chart. He's shooting the ball really well, 16 points. And he had about, about 14 in the second quarter. So... Um, you know, just superstars doing what they do. That's the offensive side of things in this game. Pete Hall is in the analysis sense. have been taking a good look at the defensive side of the game from Melbourne. Halls, you spoke about it pre-game. Where are they at in this first half? I mean, they were better in the second quarter. Credit to the Cairns for taking advantage of what we mentioned in the pre-game in terms of defensive, uh, offensive transition against their defensive transition. Shay Illy, we talk about him all the time, how good he is on the defensive end. Doesn't take skill, it takes effort. Now, he's right here. Keep an eye on Shay Illy this whole possession. Watch him head on a swivel. Firstly, he's going to stop their point guard, Ben Eyre, from getting the ball to bring it up. So they make someone else. Mirko Jerich doesn't want to make the play off the ball screen. But keep an eye on Shaley here. The ball goes in to Nate Jarwai. His head's staying on a swivel. He's ready for anyone who cuts, and then he gets a hand on this possession. And no doubt, no surprise, Shaley's the one who's going to come up with this after getting a hand in there, the loose ball. They throw it back in. They can't get it. Shaley gets it. That's just kind of the impact he has. Credit Cairns in the second quarter we spoke about. How can they attack in the offensive transition against the D-Trans for Melbourne United? Well, they get the rebound here. They go to push. This only happens if Ben Eyre pushes to the corner to take Brad Newley with him. Udai Barber is back here somewhere. So Bull Quoll gets the trail right in. Credit to Jim McCall. He's got his head on a swivel. He's looking for what's open. But you've got to have your feet set. Ben Air takes Brad Newley. Bull Quoll straight into it. That was that record tying three. But that's how you can have that success. And lastly here, Delhi Doesn't get enough praise what he does on the defensive end because of a guy like Shea Illy. But let's have a look at this. This is what Dean Vickerman spoke about at the timeout. He's going to go under this first screen because it's so high. Whenever you have a re-screen, you're taught to get over. So when it comes back under, he's going to fight over and stay on the hip. And then Hook Porty knows he's going to have that advantage against Ben Air. This is the one we spoke about, Corey. So Delhi goes underneath. And then right here, they have that trust. So Delhi knows, look, look, Porty, I'm going to let you go against the young fella. I'm going to crack down into Keanu Pinder if I have to to try and box out. Hook Porty just says, don't worry about that. I'll, I'll clean it up. And that's just what they do in the half court. But credit to Cairns for showing that at the start of the second quarter. Nicely done, Pete. As always, killing it in the analysis centre. Half time, it's Melbourne who lead 48 to 39. Monday Night Basketball in the Hungry Jacks NBL.
We're just about ready to go for the third quarter on Monday Night Basketball. The final game of round 20. Round 21 starting on Thursday night with the Taipans in action once again against the Sydney Kings in the last round of the season. In that second quarter, Melbourne went on a 23-7 run and they lead by nine, which is their biggest lead in the game right now. Flex their muscle a little bit and you heard Chris Golding talk about a danger game and saying you've got to respect the opponent and give them credit. They're playing like that. They're playing free, they're playing loose, and that's how they can be dangerous. So Melbourne clamped down a little bit in that second quarter. But can showed that they can cause some issues. They did lead at 32 to 25. Cairns in that second quarter, so it shows the turnaround. Well, while the Chul had the seal down low. Just an extra step, I believe, will be a travel. And it is. Just a little gather step. Didn't have to do it. Just throw straight up. Adam Ford. Would have been too pleased with some of their defensive efforts in that second quarter. Would have been pleased with that one, though. The Taipans have got Sydney on Thursday. And then Saturday, they'll host the Brisbane Bullets to round out their season. The Jack Jumpers will travel to My State Bank Arena on Saturday. Melbourne to play the Jack Jumpers. It's blocked there from White in a game that could very well still be live. In fact, probably will be. White. Well, Chuck Deng, a bit worse for air after getting blocked from Jack White. He's into all sorts. John Lawala Chul swats that out of the air. The competition's leading shot blocker. Getting it done again. With Delavid Dover. Not that time. O-board from Lawala Chul and then White. Against the tall timber, couldn't finish off. Another look for Melbourne. They're waiting to get Machuk Deng out of this game. Get that foot checked. Oh, oh boy. Not, not too many players in the league will get a heat check up after having a half-time break. But that man will. Up to 19 points, 6 of 9 from the field. Nicely done by Pinder. Golding made five threes when they played in round 13, five when they played in round 19, and has four tonight. The pass a little ambitious. No Dave Barlow in this second half as well for Melbourne. Out with the cautionary concussion checks. Ben Air again. There's your man. Nine points. Do you see why he's one of my favorite youngsters already? Oh, it, no it doubt. didn't take long. Well, no, you, I'm gonna go I've seen enough. I'm gonna, I've seen just a quarter of action. I'm going to rewind the tape, Jack. I believe he said his favorite youngster. <laughs> so, I... unfortunately, Bull Cole will take a back seat. And then went on to say one of his favorite can, players. Can we get a bit of criteria, actually, on what, what, what is the cutoff of youngsters? Is there an age limit? As Ben Air tees up another one. Oh, let's go! Let's go, Ben Air! Corey's let's about go. to adopt this kid. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. No fear. The Ben Air game. That's what I'm Book talking it. about. You might be best man at his wedding, the way things are going. <laughs> Loving it. Well, playing with confidence. Just walks Ooh. into it. Jack, Jack White, White does not click. Does not up. Uh, Respected. That's the opposite of what Chris Golding said at halftime. We're going to get a hand up, but here's that. Okay. Bang. He's got 12 points, five assists. And he's got, he's got some words to say to the John Kane Arena crowd. Oh. Cairns have, have, we spoke about it in the first half, Halls have had a great ability to find young Australian players. We've spoken about it with Keanu Pinder. We've spoken about it with Bull Qual. This is... Ringing true with Ben Air right now, getting starters minutes and repaying the faith. Well, I believe Paul Coles and Knox as well. Yeah, so, they're your teammates. There you go. So it's coming out of there. Shout out to the Raiders. Shout out to the Raiders. Getting that good young talent quietly, representing on the, in the NBL. Yeah, quietly restacked and ready to go for NBL 1 as well. Adam Gibson going to be suiting up. Wow. Ben. You haven't given me the criteria, though. What's, where's the, what's the age cutoff for the youngsters? It's very loose. Mason Peatland is there, too. And Knox, yep. And Ruben Tarangi was there. Oh, yeah, they're loaded. They're loaded. It's a good team. So where, where, where are you at? Bull Qual's obviously up there. He's Bull, Qual, Bull Qual's number one. Do we ha is there an age cutoff, or is it just more of a general consensus of youngsters? I think you need to play, uh, let's say, like, first year, second year players that I, I consider young fellas. Okay. Right? A guy like that that would not have even touched the court. 
So for him to just come in and be and be playing like this, I love it. Well, you heard it here first, Jack. We will scrap the Rookie of the Year award and just go with <laughs> the Homicide Youngster. Corey's Young Fella <laughs> award. I probably make one of I just, you know, post something on the grid with his face. Oh, Ben as well has really got a post <laughs> out of this. I'm oh, sure he got a post. Geez. Tomorrow's going to be all over time. You know, I'm going to talk about him. I'll pick up a few followers after tonight. 51 46, the Taipans on a 7 0 run. Much like the second quarter, they've started the third quarter better than their opponents. Let that also, I'll let this also show you that there's a lot of young Australian talent out there that are coming through the ranks. And this is the beauty of NBL 1. Being on the map, you've got now five months ahead of you to just have NBL coaches having a look around. A lot of these guys will be training with teams. Just throw it up to Hook Porty. But you start to get on a little few radars. You get out for some training sessions and you never know what opportunity can yep. fall your way. Injuries galore for the Taipans. Give Ben Air an opportunity. Oh, it's a human call. Jack White says no, sir. Elliot at the other end wanted a foul. Great rim protection by Jack White. Air, yeah. good look for Majuk Deng. Knocks it down. And that is assist number six. That man is to playing. zero turnovers. That man is playing with some swagger. 12 points in 18 minutes of action. 13 assists on 17 made field goals, too. This has always been the way for Cairns. Golding with a hand in the face. That's five threes. He's not a youngster, though. Wow. 15 threes in three <laughs> games against the Taipans this season. That was heavily contested as well. Delavadova runs the floor. Illy. Gave up his look. Now Delhi in the corner. Wanted to take Qual baseline. Old Bull and Young Bull. Old Bull scores. <laughs> Good one, Jack. Five and a half left in the third quarter. McCall high off the glass. Great take to Jim McCall over the shot blocker. Three of 11 from the field for his eight points. Tough knife so far for Jim McCall, but that'll feel good. Trading buckets in these last couple of minutes, these two teams. There's Delhi. Delhi made a killing off. Adam Ford's seen enough. That little floater that does so well. It's his go to move. Can't have that run. They'll be United respond with one of their own. Chris Golding. It's well defended from Jim McCall. There's not much more you can There's do there. There is it. Or pray. <laughs> <laughs> There's Delhi as well. This has been a fun one. Yeah, it has. Yeah. Real good third quarter. It's that little Delhi floater. It's that so well. He's done that for years. Go on. You're looking. Go on. Hit me. Okay, in there. Okay, perfect time. Shaley. Tony is Cleveland. Xavier Cooks, defensive player of the year, and why? Well, oh, you forgot Delhi as well. I mean, Delhi's leading the charge off one of the best defensive teams in the competition. Look, it's it, another one that I just, that's probably my most exciting one to see the, how the votes go. I think Shea Lee might get the nod. He's had some game-changing performances <laughs> on the defensive yes. end. Yes. Game-defining ones. Yep. I think he's going to get a lot of votes. Paul's just on the voting. Just explain to those watching at home who maybe aren't familiar with the voting process. So it starts with uh, a panel that will make a short list. So basically, because coaches and captains will have the votes ultimately to decide. And that's I like that in terms of they're the ones who know a true player's worth. They get to see them night in and night out. Uh, but the shortlist is there from the panel so that you don't have to go through every single player in the competition who's suited up to try and get your votes done. So it's going to be it's going to be tough. I mean, Delhi's been awesome as well. He doesn't get enough praise because he doesn't have doesn't lead the league in steals, doesn't do a lot. But again, players and coaches know his worth. He starts right. the charge. Shaley again. Xavier Cook's going to get a lot of votes. He's led that charge for the Sydney Kings. And then went Jack Jump is one of the best teams in the competition on the defensive end as well. 
Gata behind the back. Gets it back out for Bubba. Golding off the floor right now. Lawala Chul. They swarmed him. It's out of play. Well, we have Melbourne ball. Shot clock at five. I'm throwing one back at you, Corey. My turn. But when, have you, when's the last time you can think of a season that we haven't had a single runaway, sure thing winner of an, any award? I mean, the closest I think it is, it's maybe Bull Qual as Rookie of the Year. But even still, Luke Travis has, has been good. Let's, let's not take away from Luke Travis. For sure. Usman Jeng is eligible, eligible, eligible as well. So there's no real absolute runaway sure thing in any award, which just proves to how incredible this season has been. Well, there is an absolute clear-cut runaway pick. That's Bull Kuwait. Let's, let's be clear. That's the cl yeah, closest one. But but still this is tight. I get your point. That's, that's what you're really getting to. And you're absolutely right. And that just goes to the level of players and, and coaches and teams and guys coming off the bench playing defense like it's it's been beautiful it really has been well a tool took it upstairs that's just a great problem to have he took ding his pass chopped off by white melbourne with the numbers ahead look out the wall tool outrun anytime he turned the ball over it's a good business this is from murko jerich just let that go Melbourne lead by nine. The symmetry between the second and third quarter is there. Cairns come out hot. And Melbourne start to get control. Air. Got his man up in the air. It's tipped back out by Pinder, but to the advantage of Agata. Little Euro inside. Nice follow up by the big fella, JLA. Back to back dunks. Uh oh. See the frustration starting to come out. Coach Ford and his troops. JLA running the floor like a point guard. There's that turnover that started that frustration. That was the, that was the first one, the dunk. That was the second one. Adam Ford, you can see there. Well, this, is, this is the post midnight timeout, so we won't go into that one. No, this is the up late show. This is, but this is the frustration he's talked about. It. He's a lot of his press conferences that he's talked about throughout the season. A lot of it is he's either questioning smart decisions or effort. And he said, "Look, you can't have one without the other." Because yep. in certain games, he said, "Look, the effort's there, we're just not making smart decisions." So you can be energetic, you can be physical, you can set the tone on the defensive end, but if you're not doing it in a smart way, it's pointless. So he's frustrated about that. Other games, they've been smart in plays, but their effort hasn't been there. So that's where his frustration keeps stemming from throughout the course of the season. They show it in spurts, but not enough. And as we expect, the changes have run here. He's got a few substitutions. Oh. Sixty-two fifty-one at John Kane Arena. I also love right now we're seeing he's actually sitting down, he's talking to Chuck Deng one on one after he ripped him. Just talking him through exactly why he was unhappy. Help him. Let's have a look here. And I wouldn't be surprised if he's saying, you've got to shoot no, that no, ball. No, he was. We've had our audio crew go back and have a listen. And it may have looked a lot worse than what it actually was. But Adam Ford was basically saying to Majuk Deng, shoot the ball for me. And, see, there you go. That's exactly how it looks because that, that's a shot he has to shoot. I mean, he is, we talk about a guy who needs to score, shoot the ball. He's three of six. He's two of three from three. That is as good a look as you might get against Melbourne United's defense. And that's where that frustration is coming from. So instead of that, you put the ball on the floor and turn it over. That is really going to make you frustrated. And yes, he was unhappy, and we've seen that from him, but it, you hear him going back there to talk to him and just probably give him that encouragement and say, look, I'm frustrated because I know you can knock that down. Furthermore, I know I need you to shoot that ball. Qual for three. He misses and bubber off to the races. Look at him cut through. That's off his knee and maybe a can's ball.
Melbourne with 19 wins this season. A chance to finish on top of the table for a second year in a row. The last time that was done was the almighty New Zealand Breakers teams of 2011, 12 and 13. Years there was still in Perth. Battles. Dean Vickerman, an assistant for the Breakers during that era. Now the head coach of Melbourne United. She's starting to get a little sloppy for the Taipans. Defense has tightened up in that half court. Delhi for three. Those are the plays we talk about. Yeah, it was open, but Delhi catches it. Semi transition. Rises up and knocks it down. 15 points. Ball. Have a look at that. Delavanova got a piece of it. Now he wants to show at the other end how it's done. Oh, Gloria? Off the front of the <laughs> Who's Gloria? Who's Gloria? <laughs> Delhi heat check. Isn't that Billy Hoyle's partner on White Man Can't Jump? <laughs> yeah, it was. Gloria. <laughs> well, I'm just. But that's the recovery. So you mentioned the names for Defense Player of the Year. He's in that conversation. Big Nate. It's as easy as you like. Foods that start with the letter Q. She did well on Jeopardy, man. She, she did. won all the money. She did. The anniversary not long ago. Yeah. Walla Chul from outside. Jay Lee is like, look, I've been on the, I've been on the bench for because I had three fouls. 11 of 24 from three. 46%. Third quarter's is pinned up. Couldn't find Qual back door. Third quarters have been a huge problem for Cairns. They've been outscored by 47 in their last five third quarters before today. So all of the good work they've been doing in first half, much like Saturday's game against Perth. Again, that, but that's been the story all year long. I mean, we're talking games way back, and you see Adam Ford there, where they've been scoring single digits in the third quarter after strong starts. I, I think until a couple months into the season, they were the best first quarter team in the league. Yep of how well they started, but they were by far the worst third quarter team. And in the second, struggling to stay with it. JLA sets out the lateral quickness of Nate Jawai. Well defended. Last minute of this third term. Shot clock into single numbers now for the Taipans. Kenny. Life was made very difficult because of Shea Ely. Well, that's... Nate Jawai's got very uh, lucky there because that would have been an unsportsmanlike foul. He was trying to slow that play down as soon as it happened. You see Shea Ely just fighting over the screen. Jim McCall's picked up his third foul. We're talking about next season for the Taipans. I'm sure there'll be plenty of changes. And we've heard Adam Ford in the press conference say that he'd take a pay cut for Bull Quam County Pinder. It is crucial for those two. That is what he is trying to create in the small market of the Taipans, that style of play yep. that they can build around those two young, promising players. They nail their imports, back their youngsters in it. Could all turn around very quickly for them. Last play of the third quarter. Yeah, a little drop off for Jordan Nartai. And it'll be a healthy lead for Melbourne at three quarter time, 68 to 53. They're in control of this one now. One step closer to locking away the minor premiership. We'll come back with the final quarter next here in the Hungry Jacks NBL.
Three quarter time, it's John Kane Arena in the Hungry Jacks NBL, and it's Melbourne who leads 68 to 53. Shayili has been wreaking havoc on teams in recent times, not only at the defensive end, but also at the other end of the floor, has seven dimes in three quarters. I'll take nothing away from him when you're throwing the ball to Chris Golding, who's five of nine from three. He's going to be racking up some assists, but this is what he does. Plays defense really hard. He's only played the 19 minutes, got six points from two threes, and just finds the open man. Let's see how can start this fourth quarter. And that is not the way to do it. No. I feel like it could be question time. Well, every time he grabs the sheet so aggressively, mm. he's tick something's ticking over. We, we ran out of awards. No, it's not awards. We're, we're down to participation awards now. <laughs> Who gets the Hungry Jacks voucher? Foul on McCall. That'll be his fourth. What, Pete, I've got one for you. Please. And for both of you, actually. What's the what's the number one thing that the Taipans, or the type of player, that the Taipans should be looking for in this offseason? Well, a lot of it is depending on, again, that, that young talent you keep around. But we've seen it. The style of play that they're trying to run with, so from Adam Ford, is, is counter pin. That's not a good look at all. He's come up really shaky. He'll come to the bench, you'd imagine. He looks quite sore. But it's got to be a defensive stopper, like DJ Newbill was. I mean, that's... But again, you've got to put the right pieces around. But let's have another look at Keanu Pinder here. And oh, that's... There's not a lot in that. So that's not a good thing at all. At least he limped off on his own. Hopefully he's just a court. Yeah, hopefully a bit of a stinger. Newly missed hook Porty with a pass. Tajir McCall explodes to the other end. Now, I'm not sure if this account has an assist for Ben Air. Oh, all he needs to do is hit one free throw. Well, again, I know he took a dribble, but he did lead for the pass. It's all sometimes down to the discretion. But I hope so because I mean, look. For <laughs> <laughs> conversation's sake, I am, I'm counting. I'm, <laughs> All right, we're about, we're about 25 seconds away from him being on a triple-double watch, needing seven rebounds and three assists. Ah, he'll get a double-double. <laughs> Coach, just leave him in a game. Double-double. <laughs> Coming up. Oh, I'm not sure he's going to count. Oh, come oh. on. Took the dribble. That's where I think the discretion should come into it. If, well, petition for it. Oh, well, got it. Go. Well, have got it. it. As it should. As it should. Oh, well, now he just needs another seven rebounds, and he's just about there. I feel like we got Josh Giddy back in the league. It's the last time we've been on triple double watch for a point guard. Let's be fair. We have given out some worse triple double watches. We have. We have. And took it inside. Golden. Oh, Golden. Oh. Now hang on just a minute. Benes got a little bit of spunk about him, and he doesn't care who Chris Golding is. He's not going to take that. Hey, you guys have the best. Chris Golan threw the ball at him. He threw it at him. <laughs> you know what I love? The veteran just like rookie. Slow down. Well, that's I think that's exactly what it is. It's a block and <laughs> just giving him the ball back. He gave him the ball back. Well, I think he's going to get teed up for but it. It's more about the impact that this young man is having. Well, it's a credit to him. Love it. That's all I'm taking out of that. Let's just keep an eye on Sajir McCall as well, whether there's third man in, whether there's something there. I'm not sure that this is technical foul worthy. Well, is it? I'm no, not, it's not technical well, foul worthy. Well, I'm, I'm with you. I mean, it's not like he threw it hard or anything. Again, it's, uh, you can hear them saying they don't want to see it. You don't really want to see it. But this is... It's, gets the block and then hands in the ball and says, take it back. <laughs> It's so, that that was good, though. It's hardly Mitch Creek and Mason Peatley, is it? Like, come on. It's definitely not a Mitch Creek and Peatley. <laughs> That's just... Let's... Let's... Oh, dearie me. It's a bit of mayonnaise, I reckon. I don't want to see any physical altercation break out. This wasn't that. But as, as you said, Corey, this is... 
That's the, the impact young, the young fellas have. Young fella, this is the young, I'll vet to the young fella just saying, hang on, you're not going to get that on me. I'll block you got that. a little bit of Shane Hill in him. Air yeah, dumps it out into the corner. Great nigga. Off target for three. Just keep an eye on Chris Golding this trip down the floor. I feel like if he gets a look, it might be going up. Peatling wants a slice of the action himself. Haven't quite read the script. The young fellow's getting bulled. Well, oh, there's no doubt about that. Wow. The respect he's getting. Ball spins into the paint. And has earned himself two free throws. That's been his move all season long. To Jim McCall on the spin. I don't know I played 2K. I could have said what button that is on the controller. What buttons are on the controller? Square? I don't play video games. No, I don't play 2K, so we'll go with Square. Make some noise in here! Fourth in the competition this season for free throw attempts. Tajir McCall, he gets to the line five times a game. Love to see it. Love to see it. The rookie and the vet just having a conversation. Well, look, let's give some... Chris Gordon doesn't get any blocks. So that, that's probably what they was about. Like, here, take this one for me because oh, I don't do this often. Tell you what, the more I see a bit here, the more I like it. He's got some confidence, the kid. New tough finish. The finger roll. 72-55. The Taipans have scored just two points in this final quarter so far. Qual for three. And he, he That's passes. 58. He passes. Plus the Shane torch. Hill. Hammers the chair. Has the Hammer. rookie with the most three points. Hammer might have made. Send him a little something. Made. Send him a little something is a yeah, sure. Oh, hook Porty into the lane. German next star has played another good game today. Pete, where have you got Hook Porty? I mean, the, a lot's been spoken about Jang and Besson as far as the draft goes. It's good to see Kyle Pinderback out there. By the way, Hook Porty is going to pick up another foul. His development this season has been unbelievable from the start. How raw he was, but his body was ready. He's an athlete. And I know NBA scouts are super high on what he can bring. Look at the size of him. He's ready for the game. His touch around the rim. So no doubt he's probably going to get looked at to get drafted. And potentially, a team could be thinking of a draft and stash option like we've seen with Didi Lazada. Yep. Uh, Justinian Jessup of, look, you developed so well under Dean Vickerman and Melbourne United. But we'll, we'll draft you. Go have another year, develop even further, and then come back. It's a great point. That is assist number eight for Ben Ayer. Let's go, one. One. Still needs seven rebounds, though. Nah, I would just want him to double-double. That's even more impressive. Yep. Pinder misses the second, and the call will foul out. That will be the end of his night. Short on numbers as it is, unfortunately, the Taipans with a couple of injuries and now they have to play the last seven minutes without one of their imports. 74-59 at John Kane Arena. So five fouls for Tajir McCall. It's Melbourne now, Corey, well and truly in control of this one. 74-59 and... We've got a coach's challenge here on at McCall Fair. Melbourne well, United just doing what they needed to do. First quarter was a little bit slow, but they got it together. Take a look at some of the angles that the replay center are looking at right now. Adam Ford continuing. To try and drum home the message to his team. It's only one point in it at quarter time, but the longer the game's gone, the better 
Melbourne United have got. We've got a result in the coach's challenge. So this senior official Vaughan Mabry, and that is five fouls for McCall. Well, Hammers had a little tweet to me here asking, can we get an answer for what Young is? Well, we'll start here of the foul from Jim McCall. Oh, not a lot in it. But again, when you challenge it, there's got to be no contact. That's what they're yeah. looking at. They're going to break it down frame by frame, see any contact. So, Corey Hammer wants to know, at what age do we stop calling people young? He thinks after 23 years old, you're no longer young. Now, this is if that's determined just by overall, because we, we like to highlight youngsters when they come into the league and might be 24, 25. Well, I would say for me, 25. Ooh. Okay. And here's why. If you go four years in college, you're finished at 21, 22, right? Maybe 23, depending on when you start. There you go. So let's say you're a two-year pro. You're a young fella. Now, in Hammer's case, Hammer might have been pro at like 15 because he was Nine. so good. Not and a half. <laughs> so I would say 25. Speaking of Hammer, I think he's the... Don't worry about that. Get on the DoorDash app, Hammer, and find a nice bottle or something for Paul Qual for passing the record. That would be nice, Hammer. Why are you there? Send one to us. <laughs> That'd be even better. Air for three. That's long. 74-61. Well, you can hear Adam Ford as soon as Chris Colding has got the ball. Get up and in. Doesn't matter. It's going to be one of those nights. And Chris Golding, he's 8 of 12, got 24 points. He's just toying with them now. I mean, he could have, could have easily had a 40-point game. The way he's shooting, just hasn't taken that many shots. It's quiet. It's the front of the iron. Five and a half minutes to play. That'll help. Here's Golding. And this is what I'm talking about. He's also... We'll so they back. walk in a pot. We'll go back to what happened a couple of minutes ago. Don't poke the bear. <laughs> Don't poke the bear. He didn't poke not. the bear. The bear went and poked him. Oh, yeah, he poked back. Deng misses the layup. He really pushes ahead. Golding for three. Short that time. That's a, that's a, I'm about to come out. Oh, my job's done soon. <laughs> Deng responds at the other end. Nice knockdown from Majuk Deng. And responds to Adam Ford. That is the what Adam Ford will be smiling about right now. Well, maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're right, Pete. But that's what he was upset yeah. about. He's like, you've got to shoot the ball. Such a terrific shooter. They're free throws for Delhi from there. This will be win number 20 for Melbourne. 20 and 7 on the season. And that's assist number 9. One more. One more. Air yeah, all up and in on Della Vadova. And mind you, this is against the defending champs. With the toughest on-ball defenders at that point guard position. Uh-oh. And he has one turnover. No, coach! No! No! What are you doing? Coach! Don't do him like that! Coach! Oh, my God! Warm applause as well. Isn't that fantastic? Plays his NBL 1 with Knox. He's probably got a few mates and family in the crowd. Somebody tell Adam. Let him finish it out, fully. I'm surprised he has it. All right, Kenny into the game. Oh, nice take. Good to see Keanu Pender, who just had a little cork back in the game. A little stinger. 15 and 8 for Pinder. On the back of a career high 24 on Saturday. We've got a hand in the lane that time. Well, here we go, by the way. Hammer, to answer your question, Statman's hit me. The average age of an NBL player is 27 years and six months. Okay. Well, there we go. How does that fit into the what is considered a youngster? 
And this is my, if we're talking about the Rookie of the Year award, and something I'd like to see over the course of the next couple of years, maybe a reshaping of a kind of like a rising star as we see in the AFL, where maybe you can win it multiple times, an age cut, an age cut off where we're not going to have the development players who have that impact. If you're a replacement player, you play the whole year, not eligible. All these kind of little things that we've had to tweak over the time. So I think there's a way that we can reform, reshape it. It's also making it a bit easier for people to understand who is eligible. That's true. But none of that matters right now for we know who's Corey's got the name written on. The conversation today is about number 10 for Cairns Taipei. <laughs> ben Eyre. Ben Eyre better have a toe ball on his back because Corey's about to hitch the wagon. Facts. You gotta watch him this offseason. Hopefully he keeps up the great work. There'd be a spot for him on the Taipans roster next season, wouldn't there, Corey? Yeah, yeah. Another great story. This whole set, NBL 1 form translating into NBL opportunity. We've highlighted Lockie Barker a lot this season. Oh, in the no. Swatted by Hook Porty. Wow. That means, that means he's going to punch her a ball one day. No buckets allowed. Great offensive move, but even better. Defense to block that and then get that out of here. He's going to break a hoop and he's going to break a ball. That's three for the night. You see, that, 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 you know why that hurts him? Because he plays video games all the time, and he, that's why he's got his right <laughs> hand taped on his thumbs because his thumbs swell up from playing video games. That's that's true. That's not a fallacy. That is yeah. true. You're kidding. Stays to himself. Keeps to himself. Have a look at that. What's that? Gamer's thumb. Is that, it? Is that, that what it's called? That's the that's the the tricks on 2K. The right trigger, I believe. I, I should know. I'm not a 2K man. I'm a FIFA man. I have no idea. Well, I have very little idea what you're talking about. If there's any spare time on the TV, it's normally Pepper Bluey. Pig or Bluey. <laughs> <laughs> shout out to Bluey, by the way. I don't know if Bluey expected a shout out on Monday night NBL hoops. Huge NBL fan, Bluey. Kenny. This is out. 84 to 69. Final stages of this one. And Bubba knocks it down. 13 threes for the game for Melbourne on 43% shooting. Oh. Well, Jordan Nartai will not get credited for the assist, but he just gave a nice little assist to Jack White. Hands hung tough, made some plays. Started really well. It's still 40. He's trying, going to try and claim that he meant to get that to Agata, who steps out and misses everything. Here's that steal, and then Chaley just tried to throw it up. Nata says, no, Jack White can dunk it instead. <laughs> Chaley comes out of the game. Well, this will just about lock up as well. Will lock up top spot for Melbourne United. Mm -hmm. Home court throughout the finals. Which makes things very, very interesting next weekend. Now, we're starting with Friday night. Yeah. If the Hawks beat Perth... Melbourne and Tassie with, with Dean Vickerman has been known to play the youngsters in a game that potentially might not matter in terms of them finishing top. So that means Tassie could get that win against Melbourne, which means it'll set up for the Phoenix versus Perth on Sunday. On Sunday. So it all starts Friday night. But having said that, if Hawks get up, Hawks need a win too. If they want to try and get that home court advantage in the freeway series. But Dean Vickerman does like to play the youngsters in that last game if that game is irrelevant. I got a question. Is uh, If the Hawks lose out, could they get fourth or they're locked at third? Let me, get, let me get my spreadsheet out. I've been thinking too much about race to fourth. Dion Proustat into the game. Blocked. Oh, Matuk Deng. Ben Air back out there. Hunting one more assist. For a double-double. Deng. For three! Okay, yeah. so... They've taken one off. They've taken one off. And okay, I, he's at nine. Oh, got no. 117 left. Wouldn't surprise me if I believe in my main throws ones. 
nice pass from Pete Link. Zach Triplett into the game. Oh, hook Porty on the offensive glass, misses out. Play through air once more. And he's bumped by Prewster, and he'll be on the free throw line. So the worst, Corey, in answer to your question, the worst that Illawarra can finish is 17 and 11 if they lose both in the last round. So that that will have them teetering on fourth. That's if Perth win one of two. What is the most ridiculous thing I can think of is that Tasmania could potentially finish with 17 wins and not make the finals. It's ludicrous. It's farcical in a way. Look, it's incredible in so many other ways. I haven't said that any team will finish on 17 and not make the finals. Well, usually you think about getting 14 wins and you can start to think yeah. about final series. But Friday night, it's all going down. Oh, yeah. South East Melbourne and Adelaide is the entree for Perth and Illawarra. 9.30 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time. Check your local guides, of course, and the Red Army, if you're watching tonight... Well, you don't want to miss that one, anybody. what you are doing and make sure that you're in the house at RAC on Friday night. Your team needs you. United fans stand now. Air with a late consolation treble. Yeah, I'm so proud of this young kid. I am so proud of him. 17 points, 9 assists, 4 rebounds, 1 turnover. Good on you, kid. Pete Link for Hook Porty. That's a really good business decision as well. Oh, I'm just going to throw it up there. He'll out jump anybody and go and grab it. Air wants it again. Oh, hello. I'm so proud of this kid, man. It's 20 points. Melbourne United will go in to the NBL playoff series as the number one seed. They'll finish top of the table for the second year in a row on the back of a 92-280 victory on Monday Night Basketball. Got the job done. Chris Golding said it was a danger game. The team's got not much to play for in terms of the season. Individually, they do. They come with some confidence. They play hard. And they throw a few punches. Tommy Knight just flex their muscle at the right time. The tie pants were in it for a lot of the first half. And then even an early stage of that third quarter. But Melbourne took control. And they're going to finish the night 47% from the field, 40% from outside. And it's probably no surprise that that's our footlocker player of the game. Not at all. 27 points, 9 of 14 from the field, 6 of 11. He could have easily had a 40 ball if he hunted some more shots. But just did enough. What Chris Golding does, Delhi was good as well. Everybody chipped in and they got bigger fish to fry. But I tell you what, whichever way the finals series fall, they are going to be exciting. So much to talk about when we come back and wrap it up on the other side of this. United, winners by 12 at John Kane Arena.
Melbourne winners by 12 points tonight at John Kane Arena. 92 to 80 over the Cairns Taipans. That's win number 20. It's going to see them finish on top of the Hungry Jacks NBL ladder at the end of the regular season. I mean, it's what we expected. Melbourne United coming in knowing that was up for grabs for the talent alone to get the job done. And credit Cairns, they came out strong once they've done a lot this season and fell away in some parts. Adam Ford was trying to re-energise them. They did well to fight back. They only lose by 12. It was out to 20 at some time. Ben Eyre had a career night on John Kane Arena. Chris Golding was doing what Chris Golding does and has done for so long with 27 points. And in the end, give a lot of credit to Cairns. They fought hard. Yes, they made a lot of mistakes. Melbourne United got the win comfortably in the end. It, looked, it felt a lot more comfortable, more comfortable than 12 points. But Here's the game stats that we're having a look at. 13 threes made, 12 from Cairns. Cairns had five players in double figures. Yeah. Only nine only had three. Brandon, one of them nearly had 30. Out rebounded, which you'd come to expect. The ball was moving around from both teams. And this is a fun one. I know Cairns struggled different moments, but enjoyable to call, enjoyable to watch. Nice shooting stats there for both teams as well, Corey. Yeah, it was, but you know, the better team got it done, but shout out to Ben Air, man. I'm, I'm really, truly a fan. A kid that pretty much came out of nowhere and got an opportunity with Scott Machado going down. 20 points, 9 assists, 2 steals, and 4 rebounds. Fantastic effort. You're going against 3 of the best on-ball defenders as far as guarding that point guard position. And a kid that showed grit. He got a shot blocked, went right back in there, mm. and got a foul. Went to the free throw line. Look at him on camera. Get love. Look at that. You know, the, the fans... When you have a guy that's as elite and world-class as Chris Goulin, a champion, after he blocks the shot, he throws the ball at you. That's respect, man. This, the, the grittiness in this young man, his future's bright as long as he stays focused. And an underdog like him, he, you know, he got no choice but to stay focused. Look at these moves. Hitting threes in transition, not scared. A lot of people thrown in this situation would be like a deer stuck in headlight. Not him. He grabbed the moment, he cherished the moment, and played all the way to the end. Deserving of a, an opportunity next season. And um, I was just actually proud to just be calling this game with you guys to see this young fella. I that think you're on, Corey. We're proud to have you with us that as well. It, we, we feel proud. You feel proud. Melbourne United supporters feel proud of Chris Golding. Just about every time he takes the floor, but particularly on a night like this, when he shoots the ball as well as he did. Six made three. Well, that got him going. That's We spoke about in transition. That's a layup for him, and then doesn't matter if it's contested, if you're late closeout. When he's in one of these moods, as I said, all you can really do is pray that he misses. There's a couple of players like that in the <laughs> league. Bryce Cotton is another one. But when they get in these mindsets, it's so hard to stop. There's not a whole lot you can do. And could have had 40 if he really tried to hunt his shot, force it up a little bit more. 9 of 14, super efficient. 6 of 11 from deep. And again, he's treading the right way as they get towards finals. He's not a man you want in rhythm when finals come because he's a game breaker. At any point, we've seen it throughout his career. If it's a close game, if teams are making a run, there's a couple of players in the league who are true game breakers yeah. who can just break the back of an opposition. Chris Golding's been that for his whole career. Let's try and set up what's coming up in the final round of the Hungry Jacks NBL. Yes. We'll start with the Amy Ladder, give you an idea of what it all looks like going into the last round. So Melbourne are going to finish top. That part is locked away now, 20 and 7. But the intrigue lies from second all the way down to fifth as we take a look at what's coming up in the last round. Sydney Kings third, uh, second, Illawarra third, Perth fourth, Tasmania fifth. Let's try and work our way through this. Sydney need to win. Simple as that. Lock away their second spot. Let's go to Perth and Illawarra on Friday night, first and foremost, Pete. I mean, that, it says it all, doesn't it? I mean, if Perth get the job done, then we can we can put to bed the, the miracle story. It's not really. I mean, they've just got, been going about it. But that's game of the round because that sets up absolutely everything. The Illawarra Hawks need to win as well. So a lot's going to come about what's happening with Vic Law once we get a bit more understanding about his injury. And if he's not there, I mean, the Illawarra Hawks, they're going to want to make sure they get that win because if they don't, as we mentioned, then it sets up for Tasmania playing Melbourne the following day. Dean Vickerman, as I mentioned, are known to play the young guys to give them a bit of a run, give the Stars a bit of a rest before the finals. So say Tasmania come in knowing they're on their home floor, they're going to try and get that win to give themselves a chance, that final chance, to so say they win that. Then Phoenix head out west, that game against the Wildcats where Perth are playing for their finals for the streak. Yeah. 36 yes. years. So it all starts Friday night and it's get your popcorn ready. And in amongst that too, Corey, just quickly, Sydney and Illawarra on the last day of the season. Oh, man. I mean, it sets it up because when you, 
Illawarra just lost, but in overtime. But that was an incredible game. Mm. So I can't wait to see that go down in Kudos Bank Arena. Well, Sydney losing, as you mentioned, I, I think it's great for them. I really do, because now they just snap back into that laser-sharp focus. Every game was talking about the streak, which it's going to. It's in the back of your mind. It's at the forefront of the media. You're adding it to every tweet and everything. So now that it's done, you reset that. You say, we're locking towards a championship run. This is an unbelievable way to finish what's been an incredible season. 20 rounds down in the Hungry Jacks NBL. Just one to go, and it all starts on Thursday night with Cairns taking on City. And then you've seen the breakdown of what this last round looks like. It is going to be next level here in the Hungry Jacks NBL. On behalf of Halls, Homicide, and his new number one fan, Ben Eyre, and everyone for joining us, thanks for being with us tonight. We'll see you Thursday for the last round of the regular season. This program is brought to you by Hungry Jacks and Bunnings Warehouse. Thanks for joining everybody. We'll get right underway. Uh, everyone knows the drill, so we'll get straight into it. Chris, if you'd like to lead us off. Orny, can I just start by asking about the man next to you? Because... Three weeks ago, he hadn't played a game for this club. Tonight, he comes out, he gains the best backcourt defensively in the league and puts up 20 points and nine assists. It's an incredible performance. The, the reality is we would have had him in earlier in the season. Um, at practice, we had a real unfortunate accident, <laughs> injuries, right? So um, him and Keanu just in a, in a rebounding contest uh, collide and ruled you out for like three, two months. Two, yeah. So the reality is, is we would have had Ben in the lineup as an injury replacement player early on. And again, as you know, with all the injuries we've had, thank you, with all the injuries we had, you know, we would have seen Ben out on the floor um, earlier. But it was great. I'm, I'm, I'm happy for him that he was able to get the opportunity in front of his family out there in his hometown. And his hometown was booing him and he loves it. So, um, you know, I'm just stoked for the, uh, the opportunity that uh, Ben's been given. And, you know, he's, he's, he's playing himself into a, a job. Ben, I know it's difficult to talk about after a loss, but, I mean, are you pinching yourself right now, the fact that you're getting this chance, you're back in your hometown, you're playing up against guys like Delhi and Chris Golding and Shay Ely and, and Udai Butler, and you're playing well in your hometown and you're getting under the skin of, of Chris Golding. I mean, what's your feeling like right now? Um, yeah, I mean, it, it's obviously a great feeling, but at the same time, I, I've had this belief myself for a long time. Um, I felt like I could compete at this level um, for the last last few years. It's just now that I'm getting an opportunity, um, which I'm very thankful for. But um, yeah, obviously it's it's great going against these guys. Probably I probably get up for these. Oh, I don't get up for these games anymore. I get up for every game. But um, yeah, playing against Delhi and and Goulding and those caliber of guys is obviously probably a little bit extra locked in. But um, yeah, man, I'm just I'm just playing, just hooping, love to play basketball. So just going out there and doing that, not really thinking too much. If you ruffle Chris's feathers a little bit, it means you must be doing something right. Was that a little bit of fun between the two of you in that fourth quarter? Uh, yeah, the, I mean, yeah, it's a little bit. I just, I just like to do that. So that's my play style. Um, I'm just passionate. I don't really care who's in front of me. Obviously, I got a lot of respect for those guys and obviously Goulding, but um, yeah, I'm just trying to play. It's part of my job, getting under those guys' skin. So it's just what I, what I did. How hopeful or confident are you now that? Given the way you're finishing the season, you'll be able to find a full contract somewhere, hopefully in Cairns, but it might be, might be somewhere else. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, I, obviously that's the goal, but still got two games left. So just for me, this is like a mini eight-game season, these last eight games. So just trying to stay locked in for these next two. Um, whatever happens in the off-season, we'll see. But um, obviously love playing here, love being at Cairns. So we'll see. Aside from ben, can I just get your thoughts on the rest of the, of the game tonight? Yeah, I mean, it was it was a game of swings and momentums and, you know, like the amount of space we gave Chris. I mean, and when I talk about space, when 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 you're talking about 
you know, 98% of the league, you don't want to give him too much space. But a hand in the face is still too much space for Chris. And, you know, there was a couple of times he, I think he left a couple of shots. You know, we, we were lucky that didn't drop. So, um, you know, again, issues in the third quarter. Um, it's hard with momentum. And then, you know, we, we, we um, change up the lineup a little bit and it shifts gears. Uh, not in our favour and and um, again caught it was unfortunate we couldn't get him on the court he with the flight to Perth and playing in Perth and the flight here to Melbourne his knee just blew up a little bit which you know is something we've been managing all season so um, he couldn't get through uh, pre-game um, which was unfortunate so um, you know it's tough when our depth is you know, tested with the injuries and, and, and the carrying injuries that we have. I mean, you know, again, Keanu, hats off to him that, you know, he's, he's leaving it all out there, but, you know, he, he's not at his best because he's not 100%. So we go on a swing, they go on a run, we go on a run, they go on a better run, and we can't sustain it. And, um, yeah, like it, and Taj fouls out. And that's pretty much the result. We can be better. There's a couple of times where, you know, we're, we're still, you know, unfortunately you get caught up in the moment and you want to drop your head and, you know, it's just constantly reminding, no, to stay stay upbeat and, you know, how do we want to conduct ourselves and carry ourselves? Do we want this to be a 30-point blowout again or do we want to put some fight in, in the game and just go out there and hoop? And, um, and again, like... I'm thankful for Ben going out there playing the way he did because he led with his energy and enthusiasm and uh, and guys followed suit. So, um, you know, that's a yes and no type answer, I guess. And now in three nights' time, you play a Sydney team that there's a lot of storylines to that game. They're your former team, but they come into, into Cairns with a lot of reasons needing to win and looking to bounce back from, from a loss. And they need to keep winning if they want to stay in that second spot. I mean, it's another, it's another, it's another big test. Definitely, yeah, and um, we've got a quick turnaround with that, so we'll rest up some bodies and try and get some guys fit and strap them up and put them on the floor. And and uh, I think we need to do a better job with some of the performances we put on our home floor. I think there's been games where we've really let the crowd down. Um, so, you know, if anything, we want to sort of redeem uh, ourselves to the fan base more than anybody. I'm sure you're, you're looking forward to that challenge now on Thursday too, Ben. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm look, I look forward to every game, to be honest. Just, just want to get back out there and hoop. So, yeah. Thank you, guys. That's it from me. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, Chris. Anybody else got some questions? Matt, we're all good. Thanks, Jen. Thanks. Thank you. Part of the part of the thing is you've got to swap the chairs out. Because this one's drenched and sometimes they Sweaty go boys. the other way. We just try and be nice to them. It's very kind. Hey. This is why it's the AT. Hey, this is why it's the AT. This guy does the microphones. Yeah, well, <laughs> you swap a chair. It just grosses me out being in a suit and yeah. sitting in a chair. Put chair guy on the on the business card. Mm. It's a separate invoice, I'm not worried. <laughs>
studies in India. <laughs> Why did it do? It's not that bad. It is not that bad. It's not that bad. Quite broad, yeah. It's not that bad. feel comfortable when you jump in as a camera yeah. you know, netball basketball. Yeah. And that's what I'm told now when you should yeah, yeah. You yeah. feel really good here too. Boys were kind of like, what's going on? Yeah, but not like that. Yeah, it's not like that. Yeah, it's not like that. Yeah, it's not extreme. It's just, we're so much better when we have 18, 19 fouls. Where are we? 45 boards, 22 to 13. Yeah. They made three to Well, that like biggest start of them. Uh, we're getting on the way. Mick, if you'd like to go ahead. Yeah, hi, Dean. Hi, Chris. Um, Dean, can you just give us your thoughts on the game tonight? Um, yeah, good battle first quarter. You know, I thought there was... Cairns came with a really good physicality, um, good desperation, and, you know, um, made made us have be a little bit sticky on offence early on when we were trying to enter to the post and we, we weren't having, um, you know, great success there in the first quarter. And, you know, they made a great run in the second and, um, you know, CG just put a stop to that one and, and really got the scoreboard ticking over and, um, you know, you look here at what Shaley, you know, did again tonight and I thought he was, he was big in that, in that patch, but um, what's he, plus 26 in, 
in 24 minutes and, and stuff. So there was some, you know, some guys through that that period that got us a good lead at half time. And um, yeah, I thought after that we, you know, we had control of the game, but they kept hanging around that, you know, 10 to 15 mark. And and the way that they were shooting the basketball tonight, and we saw that with, you know, Brisbane the other night that. Um, you know, just the freedom that people are playing with at this time of the year. Um, they could get hot and, um, you know, Ben Eyre and um, uh, Bull Cole and uh, Majuk Dang, and, you know, all their shooters, you know, found a little bit of range as well to, to, to keep them in it. But, um, you yeah, know, we did what we needed to do tonight and we played a lot of people, moved a lot of people and dealt with some foul trouble and Ariel, you know, did a really good job with, uh, with Joe in foul trouble again tonight as well. Um, uh, two minutes into the second quarter, and I think you're nine or ten down. Um, can you talk a little bit about what it's like about in that time out to sort of uh, spark the guys and spark that turnaround with CG? Yeah, it's always going to be about our defence through those periods. Um, and then, you know, just to keep our spacing right as well. So, you know, CG is obviously a a massive focus for us and the way that we, we screen for him. But um, we got stops and we built some pace back in the game. And, um, you know, that was that was the biggest thing, just just making sure that we could get some stops through that period. Um, I've asked this plenty of times, but um, talk about the fellow next year. It seems like over the past year, he's just, just starting to get that uh, finals edge. Yeah, I think so. It was, a, it was an important game for the club, you know, to um, our last home game of the year. Um, you know, the opportunity to, you know, pretty much lock up the, the top spot and to, to guarantee, um, you know, home court advantage through the finals. And, you know, it's, it's the goal of this club every year is to, is to try and achieve that and to try and give our fans the most amount of games to, to come and support us at, at, and really high level games. They're, they're the ones that you want to reward your fans with. And, um, you know, we got the opportunity to do that. And, and CG, you know, one of the best in the league at, at sensing moments where he just needs to, to give us a little bit more. And, and he did that tonight. Um, CG, Dean says about sensing moments. Um, did, you, did you feel like you needed to take it upon yourself as you to dig the team out of that hole? Oh, no, not <clears throat> just um, not like make shots and, um, you know, drag the scoreline back. It was about, you know, getting stops and being aggressive on the other end, getting stops and playing at pace and, um, you know, setting the standard on... Um, our aggressiveness on, on both ends of the floor. So, yeah, it turned into um, myself making some looks and um, finding myself open a few times, but just um, more so our, our mindset and our aggressiveness on both ends of the floor to, to, to kind of stop putting them at the foul line and, and all that, because it's hard to play the way we wanted to play when we're, you know, we're either taking the ball out of bounds or um, you know, they're, they're having foul shots. Talk a bit about the sort of flow on effect that you're making, you know, getting a few of those shots in a row and, and getting that lead back in the crowd and sort of really getting into it. Yeah, I think the crowd was amazing tonight. I wasn't too sure what to make of um, make of what we were going to expect coming in. Um, you know, a Monday night game, 7.30, um, people... I, I, sure have had big weekends. We played a couple nights ago, but, you know, they were great again. That's too outstanding shows of support from our crowd and um, you know we, we just want to reward them it's been tough on everyone and you know as Dean said we want to give them as many games as possible and we want them to have as much fun as possible when they come to games you've sort of you know like basically locked away that top spot that's a bit of a mini goal ahead of the ultimate goal of winning the title can you just speak to that a little bit yeah I think um, you know you, you tick things off along the way, um, you know, and we, we take it every quarter of the season. We look at what we've done and um, how we can be better and what our record is, um, you know, and you, you tick these things off and then it's clinch the playoffs. Um, and then how good a position can you get yourself into in the playoffs? Um, and, you know, we've done that essentially tonight by um, securing that top spot, I think. And, um, you know, it's just, it's it's about the progression of where we are as a group and trying to put ourselves in the best uh, position possible. 
Dean, um, there's been, I guess, a, a few sort of little tweaks to the starting lineup in your rotation with, you know, obviously Faber coming in for Caleb when he got hurt and now sort of Shilly starting for Dally and then Dally coming back in. Can you just speak to that a little bit? And, and you know, is, it some, is there something you're going to settle on for the finals or is it still going to be a few tweaks? Yeah, I think it can be, can certainly be match-up based um, during the finals because, you know, Caleb, Bubba, you know, Shilly, any one of those guards... Um, has the ability to start and everyone's comfortable with them starting as well. So whatever we think is, is going to be, you know, the best defensive matchup for us to, to go into games. But, you know, you know, Sh yeah, I couldn't not start Shea after what he did last game. And again, he's come out and done it again tonight. And we got, you know, gradually got some more minutes into Delhi coming off, you know, being sick and, and things like that. So, you know, the... Um, Bubba, you know, I think that's his sixth game with us right now, and I thought last game he looked really comfortable. I thought he looked good, you know, comfortable again tonight. Um, you know, Caleb's playing really hard, and he's plus 20 in the game, and he just needs to see a couple go through the net, and um, hopefully the, the last game in Tasmania, uh, he can just see a couple go through, and, um, you know, he's going to be really important for us um, in the finals about the little punch, the punch that he can give us. Talk a bit about Tasmania and the challenge they posed in the last game. Um, they've had a pretty incredible season, haven't they? Yeah, they've been, you know, I've talked to them about, to our guys about, you know, just some of the things I've, I've seen them as a, as a team and the, and the way that they huddle, the, how tight they are as a group and, and Scott's done a, you know, absolute hell of a job, you know, with that team and, and you see them doing that without Magne on the floor as well and, you know, one of their, their big key signings and they're undersized at centre and, you know, they're just doing it with grit and execution and, 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 and playing together and, um, you know, it's a it's a really fun style to to watch and and, and appreciate it as as a coach. Um, so yeah, we know um, you know whatever happens, Perth, are, you know, that's kind of in their hands to 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 win the games that they need to win to to um, you know for whatever that fixture against Tassie is. But I've never been one to um, you know go into a game and you know not try and win. And um, the, whatever happens in that last game, um, unless someone is injured and can't play, we'll play everybody um, and we'll make sure that we're getting ready for the finals. Chris, can I just get your thoughts on what it means to have your to you and to the club to secure the, the minor premiership or the regular, regular season championship and lock away that top, top spot? As, as defending champs, it's not easy. How proud are you to have, to have done that? Unless I guess you lose by 150 points. <laughs> I hope not. Um, yeah, it's 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 really pleasing, um, as I touched on before, because it it gives us the maximum number of home games. Um, you know, and there's been times throughout the last couple of years where we haven't played much at home or we haven't played in front of crowds. So we want to play in front of our home fans. We want to reward them for um, sticking with us. Um, you know, there's a lot of things that come with um, getting home finals. Um, it's, it's beneficial for the club, um, beneficial for the fans. So definitely a goal of ours um, to, tr to try and wrap that up and... Um, yeah, I, I guess to do it on the home floor was was uh, fun as well. So, as Dean said, it's now about doing um, what we need to do to put ourselves in the best position that whenever that first home finals game is, we're ready to roll. Chris, you mentioned that you know Yep. Thanks.
Thank <laughs> you. 